What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech USA, and today we're gonna to be going over how to set up transmission dump valves in your FT manager. So before we get too deep into it, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of dump valves, very common in drag racing applications. Nowadays, you pretty much have to have a dump valve to run the car because we need the converter to do so many different things. We need it to be loose on the trans brake, but tight going down the track, or you want the option to turn it on, turn it off. If you go to somewhere that doesn't have the greatest prep, you may run the dump valve a little earlier, something to the 60 foot, help the car get rolling. There's two main types of dump valves you're gonna, gonna use on a drag racing application, either an internal dump or an external dump. The way they work as an internal dump basically is gonna starve the feed of the converter before it gets there. So your converter's basically gonna be dry. This does the biggest change as far as loosening it. It makes a big difference depending who makes the converter, who makes the transmission, how everything's set up. Usually a dump valve, like an, an internal, might loosen it up 1,000 RPM or more, something like that. Most manufacturers are gonna tell you not to use the internal dump down the track. It's only gonna be for the trans brake or spooling. Internal dump is super useful on a turbo application, something that doesn't make a ton of power down low and we have to get up on the brake to spool it. The internal dump helps a ton there. External dump, you can use it either on the trans brake or down the track. It's basically an extra bleed so after the converter, that's gonna bleed more pressure off on that side of it. And it's, it's, a more of a, it's more of a mild change compared to an internal dump. You might see 200 RPM difference, something like that. And d depending how crazy the transmission manufacturer wants to go, you wanna go on it. Some of them even have different jet sizes you can put in so it flows more fluid. I've seen some like no prep cars, they might have three external dumps something like that. And then depending on track conditions, you might use one, you might use all of them, but any of them, we, we need to know how to set them up in the software and kind of which features are the easiest to use to get it going. With any of the dump valves, I would always tell the customer to talk to your transmission guy, converter guy, how they want you to run them, when you can use them, when you can't use them because just depending on the different manufacturers, some people run them different ways, some people have things routed different ways, so always check in with them. I'm just gonna show you guys basic setup and ways I would do it on the fuel tech. So on the software side, we're gonna hop on the laptop and I'm gonna show you guys which features I would use or what I see commonly used to run the different kinds of dump valves. All right guys, so hopping on the software side of it, we're just gonna jump right in this one. One of the easiest ways to set up any of the dump valves is gonna be a mechanical fuel injection timer. So if we go there and turn these on. So using these timers as a dump valve, you're gonna want it as always enabled. Uh, we don't want another switch to have to turn on. Then we'll go to timers and delays. Depending what you're using, internal or external, timer number one, like right here, we'll say this is an internal dump. Easy way to only use it on the trans brake is just activate it on, two step, three step. We hit that check box, and then only when we're on the trans brake is this thing gonna be on. As soon as you let off, it's not gonna turn on down the track. Let's say we have an internal and an external. So the external, we would set it up on like timer number two. So we wanna have it on on the two step, and then we wanna use it down the track. So we can say on after launch, zero seconds, it's gonna stay on and turn off at 0.8. Basically, that's just gonna turn off right at 0.8, just like we have it planned. And that's, that's an easy way, this is the simplest way probably to set a dump up. There's not some other parameters like boost and stuff, we're gonna show you on some other ones, but Something super simple, get your feet wet, get it going. This is a really easy way to, to use it. You could also use this if you have a lockup. You want to turn on the transmission. I'm not talking like a 4L80. I'm talking like a turbo 400, soft lock, hard lock, that kind of thing. You can turn it on, give it a minimum, maximum RPM. 
but just showing you guys that while we're here. The next thing I see, let's say you have a mechanical injected car and you're using the timers. Uh, next thing I see pretty common for running a dump valve would be generic duty cycle. You can set it up by time. So even if we're not going to use it down the track, if you change your mind, you want to later, we've already got it by time. This one's super simple, two-step limit. We're going to say 100%. We're just going to turn it on. Uh, output signal, of course, is how it's wired. There is a minimum TPS. I like that because, let's say we got to hold the trans brake to back the car up. We don't want the dump on the whole time we're backing up. And I don't think you're going to be backing up over 50% throttle. If you do, like, props to you. There's also an option for enable when map is above. This is almost like a secondary kind of safety thing for the TPS. A zero PSI would be fine. So once we build up to zero pounds, then it'll turn on. If you have this, it'll have to meet both parameters for it to turn on. Progressive output by TPS, I would not use that for this feature. That's like, oh, the more I press the throttle down, the more I'm gonna turn the dump on, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So don't use that. We're gonna hit confirm, so we change this to the time-based duty cycle table. Like any of our other accesses, we're gonna make this way smaller. Generate columns, first one zero seconds, last one we'll do four. You're not gonna be dumping out at four seconds. Quarter second increments. Okay, I wanna run the dump for 0.75. What you may notice right here is there's a little line. This gives you kind of a visual look. So right in between here, it's gonna interpolate. It's not just say 100, zero. If we're right in the middle of there, it's gonna be 50%. An easy way to just turn that right off is make a break point right after. We got 0.75, we want it off. We're gonna put in 0.76, make that zero. Now you see this thing is straight down. And it's still, it, it's it's a fluid moving device kind of thing. There's still some cushion built in either way. You could turn it right off. This thing's not just gonna strike the tire. It shouldn't, it's, uh, d depending how they're set up. Some are more aggressive than others. I've seen some guys you want to kind of pulse it down, like turn it off a little easier. So if we interpolate, all the way out to 1.25. It's gonna kind of PWM out this way down. If you're gonna PWM it, it needs to be something such low amp draw, it can run right from an output or just use a solid state relay. Uh, dumps, lockups, I, I always use a relay just to be safe. I know there's some that say they're two amps, three amps, whatever, but if I use a relay, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so moving on from generic duty cycle, Turn that back off. We'll go to boost activated outputs. If you're already using one for something else, I don't know, you got a variable speed fuel pump. You could use number two, it's fine. We'll do it as number two. This is my personal favorite way to run an internal dump valve. Just to not have it open when we let go of the button because there's still gonna be some fill time after that. I don't want it on the whole time on the two-step. So we've got some pretty slick parameters here for how you would want to set it up. I'm gonna do turn on above, we'll say 0.5 PSI. Uh, you can set it lower depending on how bad things are, but uh, 0.5, your car should be able to make half a pound of boost without any help. The turn off above, this is the cool part. So let's say I'm gonna leave with 10 pounds. I'm gonna turn it off above seven pounds. So we're telling this thing to turn off at seven pounds because we're gonna leave with 10. The, the hardest part on most kind of tight converter stuff, most big turbo stuff, like maybe you got an old turbo, it doesn't spool great. It's, it's making that first one, two, three pounds of boost. Normally you get three, four pounds and something and it's, it's gonna go right through it and make the rest. But making that initial couple pounds of boost is what's hard. So if we're going to leave with 10, 
We'll leave the internal open until it makes seven pounds. Converter will be nice and loose. It'll make seven pounds quick. Turn the internal dump off and then it'll keep building up to 10. You'll leave, you'll have your full converter pressure, everything like that. Um, it could even help with reaction time. I've seen some cars slow down on reaction time because they have the internal dump open when they're going to leave. Uh, activation mode, I would do active only on two step, three step. That's the only time we want to use the internal dump anyways. Uh, minimum RPM to trigger, you can have that if you want. The most important for me, I usually have a minimum TPS, so like same as the other ones, 50%. So when we're backing the car up, we're on the trans brake, we don't have the internal dump open. Like I said, if you want to back up at 100 miles an hour or something like that, you might have to bump up that minimum TPS, but 50% is going to be good for most guys. So from there, let's say you're already using both of your boost activated outputs. We can do, we have other options. We could do a progressive nitrous. This one's already using number one, let's say number two. This one's got a lot of cool parameters. Uh, I know a lot of guys like to use progressive nitrous for the dumps. By time, of course, if you want to use it down the track. Always enabled. This doesn't mean it's on all the time. It just means it only works on a validated launch or these other conditions here. Two step, three step. Then we can give it a PWM for pre-launch. This is just saying how much of the solenoid we want on the, the little dump. We're going to say 100%. We want it on on the two-step. The minimum RPM, maximum RPM. Uh, you shouldn't have to get too crazy with that stuff. Turn on with TPS over. Again, the 50% is going to keep it from being on when you're backing the car up. And then we can even do the time-based. Let's say you want to use it down the track. This is where you would come in and do it. But this is another kind of another option let's say we've got both of our boost activated outputs we're using and generic duty cycle you know a lot of the times the turbo cars especially something more i don't know drag and drive oriented we got a lot of little options a lot of little tricks outputs we're using for stuff so i just wanted to show this is another option for you to use so just a quick recap all of the options we can use or i commonly see used for the dumps Either mechanical fuel injection timers, that's the super simple on off, give it a time, it turns off. There's not any kind of boost reference points there though. Uh, the boost activated outputs one and two, uh, normally I mainly, I would save that for an internal dump just for the good parameters it has to turn off above a certain boost level and just use it on the two step. Uh, progressive nitrous is, they're, they're another easy way to PWM it down the track if you want. And generic duty cycle, same thing as the progressive nitrous controls. It's a easy way to PWM it down the track if you want, or, you know, we're using some of these outputs for something else. Th those are our options. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up all the different ways to set up a dump valve on the software. If you guys still have any questions, reach out to us with the tech team. Uh, as always, leave a comment below if you, if you like the videos, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday.